I'm a YMO at Mount St. Patrick College in Mwollomba and you are Tom. I'm Thomas, yes. I'm a second year seminarian uh, from Holy Spirit Seminary Banyo in Brisbane. Yeah. Um, yeah, and now here I am at Ignite. <laughs> <laughs> here we are together at Ignite. Um, so the Holy Spirit Seminary, that's at ACU, I believe. Yes. So yeah, I was um, saying before how the old uh, at ACU in Banyo, all those, a lot of the main buildings that are still there, that actually all used to be the old seminary, um, going back a few, yeah. couple of decades or a decade or so now. Um, but now, yeah, the Holy Spirit seminaries, we've built new facilities sort of just down the hill. So it's it's a stone's throw away, and it's nice to be able to walk to our classes and. Yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah. And so on that, in that um, seminary place, you live with other seminarians? Yep. Yep. So there's a sort of community of you, I guess. Yeah, there's like uh, there's around tw- 20 of us. It sort of fluctuates because in our fifth year, um, there's what's called pastoral year placement. And so they, if you're in your fifth year, you go out to a, a parish somewhere mm-hmm. in the diocese that, that you're a part of. Um, because, yeah, keep in mind that the seminary, it's for the whole province of Queensland, um, yeah, the okay. one we have. So some guys from Rocky, some guys in Toowoomba. Um, where else am I missing? Well, there's no one from Cairns, sadly, yet. Um, and then there's, actually we do have a Lismore guy as well. They're sort of trying something new. And then, yeah, of course, um, Brisbane. Yeah. So. And so you're from Brisbane? Well, originally I'm from Sydney. Okay. Yeah. So I, I actually came up to the Gold Coast halfway through 2012. Mm-hmm. Um, I was in year 10 at the time and uh, with my, myself, my twin brother, uh, our parents and our pet cat and pet dog. Can't forget those two. No, they're um, part of the family. <laughs> part of the family. Um, sadly, the dog's passed on, but oh. that's all right. We've got a new border collie now. He's very okay. cute, that's very good. friendly too. Um, but yeah, uh, and I do have other siblings. Uh, my older brother... Uh, he's well the eldest brother Damien he moved to the Gold Coast years before we did um, sort of led the way I guess um, and then I've also got my two older sisters and another older brother wow. um, the older sister is in Sydney um, soon to be married actually and uh, the older brother uh, not the eldest but Chris the uh, third eldest he um, he's in Sydney as well he just got married um, and then I've got, yeah, the sister above us and she's going to be married soon as well. Wow. Um, to good old, you know, DJ Raph, Michelangelo. So that, that's exciting. Wow. Big family. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. Six of us in total. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Kids. Yep. Cool. Um, so for you growing up, was it a Catholic thing? Like, have you always been Catholic? Is your whole family Catholic? Like, tell me a bit about your family, like when you were growing up. Yeah. So I was, you know, born and bred uh, cradle Catholic, as they say. Um, in Sydney, and I guess, um, you know, went to church every weekend, um, you know, we had sometimes family prayer, particularly at our grandparents' place, uh, they'd have a, what's called a cenacle, um, sort of with the marriage movement of priests, if you've ever heard of them. Um, anyway, it's, it's basically a strong devotion around the rosary, around Our Lady. Um, so yeah, that was definitely a, a big part of my faith, even at a young age mm-hmm. growing up, that sort of... Um, that was instilled in me, that relationship yeah. with Our Lady. Um, I was, I've, I was given, given that, in a sense, on a, on a bit of a silver platter. Um, and she's always been a part of my life, which is quite, um, yeah, it's quite critical. Yeah. And, um, yeah, but I guess, like, you know, it was sort of like you go to church and you sort of come back home and, and that's kind of it. Like, yeah. it was like... Leave it at the door sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, you sort of, le- like, leave it at the door. You didn't really talk that much yeah. about it or anything like that and or go and sort of evangelise. Yeah. There wasn't that real idea, I guess, in that parish. Mm-hmm. And I never really sort of had that idea or concept that yeah. that was a thing. Um, but certainly uh, when we moved up to the Gold Coast, continued, you know, in my faith, um, wasn't like super, again, not really super obvious and mm-hmm. um, about like evangelising and sharing that I'm, you know, love God and all that stuff. Yeah. I think it came across to some people at school, don't get me wrong, but... Um, Certainly after school, I, I I was actually thinking about joining the Defence Force Academy. Yeah. Um, I was thinking, you know, that's the only thing I can possibly see myself doing that I might actually enjoy, mm-hmm. you know, that sense of adventure, the, you know, strive above above mm-hmm. and beyond kind of thing and be the best. Yeah, the challenges. The challenge, yeah, the adventure, mm-hmm. the all, all the stuff that I think are, 
a young man would, would desires yeah, yeah. deeply, particularly that sort of adventure and, yeah. and that sort of fulfillment. Um, and it was at a, I remember, you know, meeting a special, <laughs> I, I was obsessed with the special forces, you know, my twin brother and I were quite athletic and we always loved that idea of, you know, special forces, you know, being the best. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, you know, when we were young, we'd go and in the park and terrorise people with our cap guns and <laughs> build cubby houses and put paint all over our faces, get camo on us and everything. And, you know, it was, I, I know that was sort of, you know, it, it grew a bit deep in mm-hmm. that after school. But, um, yeah, I remember just never fully being satisfied with that yeah. idea of being in the Defence Force. Like this feeling like, oh, something else is... Something's inside yeah. like this I, I meant to be somewhere but i don't know for sure yeah um even though it really appealed to me the defense horse academy um but i sort of put that on hold because i was in the application process towards yeah. it and i sort of put it on hold and uh, along with my twin brother who was also doing the same thing um and we both were like oh a bit hesitant you know Ooh, a bit scary mm. big commitment eight years basically if, if we were to go down ad for way yeah um and then it was in that moment where, like, I think a couple of weeks later, when I put that on hold, our old youth coordinator from um, our parish in Surface, Surface Paradise Parish on the Gold Coast, um, who was also our youth coordinator at our school in Marymount College in Burley Heads, she was coming back because she'd, she'd gone back down to Tamworth, where she was from, and she was coming for a visit. And um, so my cousin was asking Matt and I to oh, do you want to go to this youth group thing Yeah. Um, at our parish, uh, Venere Youth Group? Um, and we were meant to go, we, we agreed on it. We said, all right, fine, you know, Matt and I and our cousin Anne-Marie, who also, was also in the same year at school with us, who we grew quite closely to, yeah. and we still are very close, um, closer now. Um, and I remember that week uh, we were at in our house and Matt and I, you know, Lord of the Rings came up on the, on the TV and I thought, oh, you know, we, we said we were going to go to this youth group thing and we promised our cousin, but you know what, Lord of the Rings sounds so much better right now. Yeah. Um, so Matt and I just stayed and we watched Lord of the Rings, we didn't go. But then the week after, uh, you know, our cousin was like, oh, I went to youth group, you know, it was really, really good, mm. you know, you have to come along, um, you know, you just have to come along. And we're like, okay, yeah, yeah, you know, we'll come along. And then probably felt pretty bad too <laughs> that we didn't go. But um, and then we went, and that was when our we heard that our um, old youth coordinator Eliza was coming up mm. to visit, and so there was more incentive there as well. And we're like, oh great, yeah, we'll say hi to Eliza. She was yeah. really cool. Um, and then yeah, so instead of going to youth group, it was this other event called Ignite Live that we were going to. Mm. And so we rocked up at the um, parish and. Yeah, we got in the cars with all these other youth uh, and the new, new soon-to-be, well, no, I think she was officially now the new youth coordinator, Steph Santos, and herself and her sisters, Amy and Kat, came up with us. And, yeah, it was like we didn't really know exactly what we were getting into mm-hmm. or <laughs> what was going to happen. But yeah, um, I remember walking in there, you know, at the start, so much welcome, all these mm-hmm. people welcoming, welcoming, welcoming. I think I even met seminarians and yeah, yeah. I think one of them, oh, no, they probably didn't. They used to hand out all these, like, you know, you'd make a good priest cards, um, but I don't think it happened that time. But anyway, and then I remember walking in there and I sort of thought, like, oh, what is this? Like, this seems like Pentecostal or something. Yeah. Like, I didn't understand what was going on. Like, all these youth sort of, you know, praising God, mm. putting their arms up and that. I'd never seen that before yeah. uh, from where I came from in Sydney. And then um, I didn't even really, I didn't even know we had the youth trip there, actually, at a parish. It was so weird. But it was the right time, you know, yeah. um, and I remember, yeah, just thinking like straight away. Well, first I was like, oh, it's a bit unusual. Uh, I don't really, you know, pray like that. But um, then I was looking around and I was really struck by how much youth were there. Like yeah. how many how many youth were there and similar to my age, you know, yeah. normal looking people, you know, not. And I and I, it was just sort of hitting me all at once, all these mm-hmm. thoughts like, where have these people been my whole life? Mm-hmm. Like these people seem really cool, like. And they seem so free and like happy and like joyful, like yeah. something I don't have, you know, I felt like I was missing something. Yeah. And, and then also thinking, well, maybe I don't know at all, you know, what's, mm. I thought I kind of knew my Catholic faith, you know, born and bred, gone to church every weekend. Um, but these people seem, I don't know, alive on fire. Yeah. Um, and I guess it was in that moment um, 
you know, we're singing the praise and worship and that. And then I was just, I don't know, I was, I think I just got really, started to get really emotional for some reason. Mm. Um, and there was all these tears coming up and I was, I was, you know, pretty prideful or whatever, you know, got to be a tough man. So I was really trying not to cry, um, which I sort of successfully did. <laughs> um, but definitely it was in that moment where, yeah, I felt like, I felt like this immense love yeah. sort of come upon me, um, like almost like a blanket that just thrown on me that went right through, mm-hmm. um, just like so much love. And I knew, like I knew it was Jesus. Like I really knew it was Jesus. Um, can't really say why or how, but I just pictured him, I guess, in my yeah. mind to be standing there or, or with me in that moment. And I, in that, uh, as this was all happening as well, at the same time, I was feeling like the weight of my sin and like how I was holding on to all these things in my life that, and how I'd sort of turned my back on God a bit mm. without, without fully knowing it. Um, but I guess God wanted to show me that, um, which, which hurt as well. Like, and I, I guess in that sense, I realized how many walls I had sort of built up in my heart yeah. um, from that sin and from, you know, not really finding God's mercy. Mm-hmm. Um, and I guess because before that, I'd seen God as very kind of distant, sort of up in the clouds maybe or and not really, you know, yeah. emotional was, or yeah. not, not relational, yeah. um, you know, sort of very true and good and holy and, and that, but definitely not someone who's like, you know, someone who loves me mm. with great intimacy, mm-hmm. um, like like I'm, you know, his only child sort of thing. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that was a profound experience I had. And that, that just changed me. I, yeah. I, I walked away thinking, like, I remember right towards the end there thinking, like, I, I'm just going to give it all to God. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm, whatever comes up in my life, I'm just, like, God's will. Yeah. You know, yeah. God's will, um, which was fitting because I was, again, discerning, well, where am I going to be in life? So... I just thought, okay, this this is a door to an adventure mm-hmm. and I'm going to accept it and invite God in. Um, and, yeah, that led me from one thing to the next, which basically led me to work for my family cladding business um, that my eldest brother had started on the Gold Coast. Um, and I knew that God wanted me to help, help the family out in that sense. Um, so I did that for a year and three months. But then, yeah, towards the end of that, I realised... And that was tough, very challenging. I had to put on a lot of hats, you know, in the office, in the factory, on the work site, all mm. these different things. But it was a great experience, yeah. good opportunity to grow. Um, but, yeah, um, I, I knew that there was something else. And mm. I, a couple of weeks at work, I was struggling so hard to mm. work and I couldn't understand why. And my twin brother was experiencing the exact same thing at the same two weeks, basically. Sometimes mm. it was one day or the same day. And then, yeah, I went to a retreat with the Capuchins, um, just to discern like, okay, where's God calling me? I had been in touch with Father Morgan Batt, vocations director yeah. of Brisbane. And um, yeah, I, I was just getting more and more thinking like, oh, like God's calling me somewhere, you know, yeah. to work for the church in some shape, way, shape or form. I was thinking Net Ministries, but then Matt was like, nah, I think Canali House. And because uh, we'd been seeing Father Morgan, and, and found out about Canali House. It's a place where young guys can go to discern priesthood before mm. committing to the seminary, yeah. which is quite profound. It's it's actually like one of like five unique uh, un- unique um, houses, if you like, yeah. of formation in the world. Um, wow. And yeah, I got to know Father Morgan back. And because he had that, because he was a chaplain in the army for like more than t- over 10 years or whatever, like he had all these great stories and I was so inspired. I was thinking, wow, like this guy's a priest, you know, he's in, he's been in the army. He's gone to, you know, Iraq and Iran and all Timor. And mm. he's a mountaineer, international mountaineer. He's climbed Mount Everest, all these yeah, crazy wow. mountains. Like priesthood, really? Like what, <laughs> how does that even work, you know? How did he end up as a priest? Yeah, yeah, how, exactly. It's like, wow. I Again, I thought I knew it all, you know. Yeah. I thought I knew it all, but I really didn't. Yeah. And so, again, possibilities. And so I really, I, I guess I knew deep down, yeah, somehow I know, I think God's calling me to be a priest. Yeah. You know, praying about it. Um, and then, long story short, at the end of that year, I was filling out my evaluation forms to join the seminary. Mm. And it was then that it all made sense as to my calling because I remembered an experience that I had when I was about, oh, it could have been around 10 years old. I could have been a bit younger uh, with my twin brother. And we were 
at our grandparents' place. Mm. Again, very holy Catholic people, probably some of the most holiest people I've ever met in my life. Um, very inspiring to me. But outside their bedroom window, you know, we're there in the garden catching lizards because mm. I love lizards. I, I still catch lizards, you know, bigger ones maybe now. <laughs> But crocodiles. No, on not the crocodiles. Daily. Probably not. No. <laughs> I wouldn't be game, no. Um Steve Irwin, you know, that's that's for <laughs> Next people Steve like Steve Irwin, yeah. but he's a priest. Yeah, as a, yeah. <laughs> Maybe oh who knows. No. Nah. <laughs> um but yeah, and I remember just like standing up and this thought came across my mind. I thought it was my own thought, but on hindsight it was mm. the Holy Spirit talking to me. And it just the the, the words that came was um one day I'm going to be a priest. And even at that young age, I guess because I was so young as well, you know, and, and the, the source of truth, the Holy Spirit talking to me, I, I immediately believed it. Mm. Like in my heart, in my mind, I thought, oh, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I didn't know why. I just said, yep, that makes sense. Wow. But I'd forgotten about that experience until that moment. Yeah. And then I knew 100%, oh, my gosh, like this is why I'm, I've always had that feeling in my heart of I don't know, who, like, who I am or what, what, what I am or um, what I'm to do in the future. And I was always hesitant. Again, remember thinking about Defence Force and mm. other things. Never fully clicked with it and something missing. Yeah. And that was the kind of puzzle. Yeah. And I looked back and then looking back at my life, I realised it all just some, it just made sense. Made like sense. it was all pointing to that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was a long journey to get there. Mm. That's for sure. Yeah. But and anyway, that was uh, probably <laughs> long answer. No. But it was really interesting. Yeah. I find it cool how you can sort of um, come through this journey and then look back and see how like where God was working in your life there and how he mm. was leading you to this point and see like maybe how he got you through different things that you thought maybe you couldn't get through. But in the yeah. end, you were here and um, this is what you're supposed to be doing. And it's kind of evident just been talking to you. You seem like you're just in the right place at the right time at the moment and mm. it's really right for you. So. It's really cool um, mm. to see. Um, I know there's like a bit of um, sort of not stigma, but some boys are sort of a bit too like scared to open up and um, to receive Jesus and to meet him. And I know you were talking about that earlier, how um, you didn't want to cry, but because <laughs> you're trying to hold on to this masculinity, I guess. But um, yeah, something like that. Yeah. What would what would be some tips for people who? Um, a sort of people who maybe don't get into their faith or they leave that at the door, like you said, or mm. um, can't, don't want to let down this um, barriers that they're holding inside of them? Well, you know, I think, you know, God works in a lot of different ways for, you know, different people, everyone's mm. unique and, and whatnot. But I think, like, definitely to come to an event like this is, I think, valuable yeah. for just about anyone. Mm -hmm. um, to see that, oh, wait, there's other guys, there's other, there's all these... Yeah. Um, maybe attractive looking girls as well, you know, <laughs> who are so on fire for their faith. And it's like, wow, that's, that's inspiring. Like, yeah, you know, and they're all, um, they seem to be pretty normal people, pretty happy yeah. people. Yeah. Um, so I think, I think a starting point would be, yeah, to, to sort of have that experience of ha being surrounded by people yeah. around your age. I mm -hmm. think that's quite important. Again, in my story, that was very important. Mm -hmm. I thought, wow, this is, I'm not the only one yes. practicing my yeah. faith yeah, um, or something like that, but so I think to come to an event like this would be good. Um, I think, like, really, yeah, to have that encounter with, to be open to an mm -hmm. encounter with God, like, uh, it's pretty crazy. It sounds crazy, but just to to be open and have mm -hmm. that prayer, just to say, God, you know, like, if you if you're real or um, if you love me, like, I don't even really know you. Just mm -hmm. to be honest, yeah. I think honesty is so important. Mm -hmm. um, so I think for a young man who's sort of in his faith but maybe not really on fire or doesn't has all these questions i think yeah. i think to start to be honest with god and just to say god you know like just meet me where i'm at i, I don't yeah. really know you um I, I might even see you as the kind of judgmental harsh mm. god that's sitting up in the clouds waiting waiting for me to you mm. know do something slip up um and just to realize yeah like how we all need god yeah um, we all need his mercy um, we, we're, we're all broken people. Mm -hmm. Nobody is perfect. Mm -hmm. um, you know, everyone, if there's any true equality in the world, it's that we're all sinners. Um, yeah. You know, like we need to recognize that, I think. Um, yeah, so 
to try and get to some events where where you're surrounded by like minded or similar age guys to yourself um some catholic events and then just to be open to what god Mm -hmm. might want to do in you know in your life um because he can do truly amazing things and you'll have all these questions and honestly i think um most of them will be answered in that first instance when you do encounter Christ. You know? Yeah. Your life will start to make sense. Um, you, you'll understand. You might even start to realise where God's calling you mm. pretty quickly. Um, so I don't, if that's some bit of advice no, I can give, that I would be... I think that was great advice. Yeah. Um, I just want to say it's so inspiring to have someone like as young as you, as people would say, um, in the seminary and um, wanting to become a priest. I think a lot of young males will look up to you and um, everything you do and um, just such you're such like a good um, influencer to um, all these young people here. So I just want to thank you for being um, a witness to the faith sort of thing um, and pursuing that. But I think that's all we have time for today. So thank you so much, Tom, for um, chatting chatting it up with me um, awesome. about Likewise. everything about your life. But um, I've really enjoyed it. Thank awesome. you. Very good. <laughs> thank you.